the city was founded and the city was built based upon the commerce that traveled up and down the river. While shipping was so important to building the city of Philadelphia, it also acted as an impediment for people to reach the river. It was very industrial, it was not a friendly place to be, and as that industry was bookended on either side of what we call the central Delaware Riverfront, there was a post-industrial remnant that was left there. And you had to think then, how do you solve that problem? How do you switch from an industrialized riverfront to a more recreational and welcoming riverfront that provides access back to the community? So that was sort of problem number one. Problem number two was that in the 1970s, Interstate 95 was built along the riverfront, which both, I think, psychologically and physically then separated Philadelphia from its riverfront. DRWC's main purpose is to reconnect Philadelphia to the waterfront and to do that through any means possible. So very simply, within that master plan, we thought of a park system. So a park every half mile along six miles of waterfront, connecting all of those parks with a trail system, and then physically, where possible, getting under, over, or around I-95 through what we call our connector street programs. And once you can access the riverfront, you'll have somewhere to go. You'll have somewhere to enjoy. You could do something like that when you get to the riverfront to reclaim it as the city's. We had an old pier structure called Pier 9, a 55,000 square foot shed that was built in 1919 to capture what, what would have been like super tankers at that period in time in history, 500 feet long cargo ships that would come in. We happen to control this pier, which is gorgeous, and sits within the Ray Street node. So we had already built the Ray Street Pier and the Ray Street Connector. And then based upon the success of those infrastructure improvements, the Fringe Arts building took over uh, the pumping station. So we started to see a critical mass growing. We started asking folks, hey, do we want to redevelop this? Are you interested in the redevelopment of this? And the response would come back to us, yes, we are very interested, but we have to take the building down. And we could not wrap our minds around that. We did a, a lot of community outreach and met with um, local Philadelphians and, and people from all over the city and the area to talk about what they would like to see in the space. And the main thing that came out of those conversations was that more room for art and artist studios. So then a vision started to form. It should be a space that showcases Philadelphia's creative community, emerging entrepreneurs, and invite as many people into that process as possible. So that was the seeds of the thoughts of Pier 9 transforming into Cherry Street Pier, ultimately, which is the, the facility that we have today. One of the concepts behind Cherry Street Pier is to uh, create an environment where the general public can come in, interact with artists, kind of demystify the art making process, and feel more comfortable being around contemporary art. They are asked to sort of live in a fishbowl, which doesn't work for a lot of artists. A lot of artists are very private in their studios, but we picked artists that are very open and, and really want to interact with the general public coming in. The 14 artist studios here at Cherry Street PR are rented on an annual basis and the idea behind that is that the artists would be here for a year, it would be sort of an incubator for them and they would be able to sort of spread their wings and move on to other opportunities outside of Cherry Street Pier. This is the area that we call the garage. It's our gallery space. We do rotating exhibitions in this space every six weeks or so. It's a space that's open for anyone to apply to exhibit in the space so that you can go to our website and apply online and get an exhibition here where thousands and thousands of people will see your art over the course of six weeks. The area we're in now is called the amphitheater, and as you can see, it has these amazing built-in steps that people can use as seating. It's one of the many areas on the pier that gives us the flexibility to host a wide variety of workshops um, and other activities. And then uh, you see here, we've also hung um, this amazing curtain. This is a partnership between Flesher Art Memorial and Women Organized Against Rape. It was a community of Latina women that came together on a regular basis and made art as a way of healing from the process. They were all migrant women. And this is sort of the legacy that they're leaving behind. It is composed primarily of recycled materials. These are 60,000 soda tabs. There's also bottle caps. There's remnants of different garments that they've worn at different points of time. And it's sort of the, the legacy that they left. It's called Life is Not Disposable, and it was a great bonding experience for them, and we're happy to host it on the pier. 
The garden was created out of reused shipping containers, as were the studio spaces. They were cut down to create these really large planters so that we could have uh, greenery here on the pier under the beautiful exposed sky. We also have some food vendors, two of which are housed in the garden area. It's another incubator process. Most of them were kind of emerging food vendors and it was offering them a, an opportunity for either a first brick and mortar or an additional brick and mortar location. The other side of Cherry Street Pier was to create a marketplace. And one of the things the community came to us with was that they really wanted a farmer's market in this neighborhood. So we have partnered with the Food Trust to create one of the largest farmer's markets in the Philadelphia area. We had over 6,000 attendees at our first market. We also host a variety of other markets. We do flea markets, we do craft fairs. Cherry Street Pier itself curates an art and artisan market that's on the last Sunday of the month. So we can extend the opportunities that the studio artists get to a, a much larger audience. Cherry Street Pier is one of the last standing historic pier structures on the waterfront. When we created the garden on the outside, we didn't just take down all of the structure around the garden, we left it in place. Uh, it was very important for us to use that light touch and to architecturally leave the building intact so it could tell its full story over time. I think most important are the conversations that take place within that shed and the different communities that feel comfortable enough that can let down their guard and come in and say, hey, what are you doing here today? What kind of art are you making and what does that mean to you personally? What does that mean to your wider community and how does that relate to me um, then as a person? I think that's probably the most important part and my favorite part of the pier. Mm -hmm.